It's Thursday, January the 20th, 2022, the day after Canon announced the Canon R5C. And I gotta admit, I'm completely surprised. I'm staggered by the amount of comments with you being disappointed with either IBIS or the autofocus system or the differences that the R5C versus the R5. And some of you were actually looking at buying the R5C and you're confused. And I would say that has to be one of the most popular conclusions I get from reading all the comments. Many of you are confused. You don't understand this R5C. And this video, this video is going to unpack all that. I'm going to explain what the R5C is, who is it meant for, and why the differences between IBIS, autofocus, and a few other topics. The first thing that's really important to help shed light on the R5C versus the R5 is the operating system. Yes, cameras do use operating systems, and we generally call it firmware, but this is what governs how the camera operates. The R5 has the same operating system as the R6, the R3, the EOS R, the R. To some degree, there are differences, and of course the 1DX Mark III. The operating system is designed for stills first with video second. The Canon EOS R5C is not just a video-centric camera, and I apologize because when I talked about the rumors of this camera, I really believed that the R5C was just going to be a video-centric version of the R5 and not a true cinema camera, much like the FX3 is to the A7S III. But I was wrong. You see, the Canon R5C being a is aimed at people that produce video, that are professionals, that really want those professional quality type capabilities. And the R5C was given a completely different operating system, not a completely new operating system, but the same operating system found in cinema cameras like the C70, the C100, the C200, the C300, and so on. It is designed specifically from the ground up for people shooting video. Okay, so that will explain why they are different. That's the baseline for this discussion. And if you look at the promo from Canon, you can see they are very, very different in how they're set up. The autofocus system for the Canon EOS R5 has the same autofocus system found in the full frame mirrorless cameras. It has dual pixel autofocus version 2. Dual pixel is new to the cinema line. Not all of the cameras on the cinema line actually have dual pixel autofocus. The C70 using the cinema. OS has version 1 of dual pixel. Now it's very probable that it will come with version 2 at some point. I don't know any rumors about this, but it certainly makes sense because at one point there was no dual pixel. So that is why it's not that Canon is crippling in this case. And while some might argue that it's the cripple hammer at work, I'm going to argue that counterpoint, look at the differences in the operating system. So we get a truly video specific operating system. So yes, the autofocus system is different. But again, up until about a year or two ago, we were perfectly happy with dual pixel autofocus and that's what this has. Yes, vehicles. Yes, animal eye detection might not be quite there, but if you're doing a lot of production work and you're focusing on people, it's got what you need. The lack of IBIS. Now what IBIS is, is image stabilization. We don't care about IBIS, what we care about is the image stabilization. Now when it comes to the still side of the camera, I can see why not having IBIS would be a bit of a detriment to you, but it's not a handicap. IBIS really comes in when you're shooting in low light situations as a photographer. It allows you to shoot at less than 1 60th of a second, and IBIS steadies the camera so you can get the shot without any sort of blurring or motion blur. But again, up until a few years ago, no Canon cameras had IBIS, and we did okay. And for professionals, if you're shooting, or even amateurs, if you're shooting in normal low light situations, generally, IBIS isn't going to have a huge impact on you. And on the still side, okay, yes, we don't have IBIS, but you've got everything else. How many other cinema cameras or video centric cameras, camcorders, have a 45 megapixel sensor, 20 frames per second, the dynamic range, everything else you would get in a truly professional camera in a video centric camera? So now let's look at the image stabilization with the R5C. It's not void of image stabilization. Yes, it doesn't have IBIS, but it does have image stabilization. It's digital image stabilization. And I want to do a shout out to Gordon Lang. I'm going to show you a quick clip here. He's showing you how the Canon R5C performs with digital image stabilization. Is this disappointing to you? 
This looks pretty good, doesn't it? So the R5C does provide stabilized video. It doesn't have IBIS, but it does produce stabilized video at a more professional level. Okay, so I've talked about IBIS versus image stabilization, and you might still prefer IBIS, and I get that. That's a valid point. I'm not here to convince you one way or another whether to buy this camera or not. I just want to try to remove the confusion as to why these cameras, which appear very similar, are so very different. The reason why Canon gave this a video-centric operating system is because it's they're trying to tell you it's for people who want to shoot video. They want to shoot video uninterrupted. The biggest beef with the R5 was the overheat. Again, Gordon Lang shot for over two hours, three hours at one point, on a single 512 gigabyte card with Canon RAW, one of the compressed RAW formats, without any issues whatsoever. You get 4K oversampled, 8K, or sorry, 8K oversampled 4K. There is no soft 4K, and even their 2K is 8K oversampled. You can shoot full frame, Super 35, Super 16, Another big gain, again, this is for video, folks. If you're shooting stills, this doesn't matter to you. But when you're shooting video, to be able to have waveforms, vector scopes, false color. And I want to stop here and talk to you about the problems I had when I first got the R5. Trying to get the exposure right was impossible. It took me six to eight months to finally figure it out. And what I learned to do when I'm shooting Canon Log 3 with Cinema Gamut is I set the shutter to 1 60th, which is twice my frame rate. I adjust the f-stop without any UV to hit the ISO right around 800, and that will generally get me to expose everything perfectly to the point where if it's a little bit off, I can fix it in post without any issues or noise. However, it doesn't tell me how the IRE is set on the face with waveforms. You can actually determine the exact IRE of your talent so your talent is perfectly exposed every single time and this matters when you want to step up your game and trust me on this i shoot with a ninja 5 and it has waveforms now the one in the r5c and the c70 it has a monochromatic waveform the r5c gives me a waveform where i can actually see color so when i'm sitting outside and it's a busy scene the waveform seems like it's all over the place and it's unintelligible but all i do is i wiggle a little bit and i can see where i am represented in that waveform and i want to see how high i am I'm relatively pale, I'm European, so my IRE is higher, probably around 65 to 70 when I expose. My wife is Asian, so I wanna bring the IRE down to about 55. The Canon R5, you cannot do that without sort of some sort of external monitor. You're guessing at best. The histogram doesn't show you that. All it shows you is the brightness of the scene from zero to 255. And when you press record, it's gone, not the Canon R5C with that Cinema OS, those waveforms, false colors, and vector scopes are on there when you press record. So you can rest, press record and never forget. Another thing too, this has an active cooling system, which means it has a fan. And as Gordon Lang said once again, in his video, he showed you how you could set it on auto or manual. So if you want to make sure you don't have it really loud, you can set it on the lowest level. And even with a shotgun mic, you're not going to pick up on it. But once it starts to go above that, well, you pretty well want to mic up your talent. You want to have the camera about a meter or 3.3 feet away. And that's not a big deal for a lot of us. Look at me. I'm mic'd up now. Am I recording audio? I certainly am. I'm mic'd up. I don't have to worry about any autofocus so sounds of the Canon 50mm f1.2. There are a lot of lenses I shoot with that make noise that require me to mic up my talent. So... We have a fan, it can go up really high, so I have no doubt that even in the subtropics, even in hot tropical environments, the R5C is gonna be able to record 8K video, 4K, 2K, whatever you shoot, Super 35, Super 16, full frame, without overheating, much longer than any other camera. And if you're shooting internally in a studio like CES or anything like that, this camera isn't gonna stop until you run out of power. So plug in a dummy battery, you can go for a lot longer, or until you run out of storage. So put in one of those two terabyte CF Express cards from Angelbird, and guess what? You can record on a single card for up to 10 hours. And again, I wanna reference Gordon Lang. He was able to shoot one day for up to eight hours, no sign of overheating. And I invite you to watch two videos. Watch Canon's own promo video first, where you get to see the menus in a lot more detail, showing you the R5C, and then Gordon Lang, he's the only one I know of right now that had this camera in hand 
and he showed you his experience. But also keep in mind, this is a pre-production model. One other thing people said, it takes eight to nine seconds to go from stills to video. Well, Gordon Lang did the switch and it didn't seem to take more than five seconds. And what he did, he went from photo to the middle position to turn it off, wait for the R5 to properly shut down, and then he switched it over to video. Okay, so if it does take five seconds, you do have that boot up time. But that is only there if you're going from stills to video. If you're gonna stay in a video mode for a while, you're not gonna have that same issue. So at the end of the day, the R5C, you have to understand that it is very much a video-centric camera, and Canon thought as much to give it a video, a cinema OS. And it's a very, very powerful operating system. Pro, that's what pros use at the cinema level. It does take a bit of a learning curve. You are going to have to get used to this camera, but with waveforms and other tools, it's got you covered. And when you do want to shoot stills, okay, you don't have IBIS, but if you're shooting in bright light situations, you're shooting with a wide lens, this really isn't going to be a problem. I mean, really, come on, folks. We've only started shooting with IBIS in the last couple of years. Now, the question is, am I going to get the camera? Many of you have asked me if I'm going to get the camera. Well, I look at capabilities, not specs. And I love waveforms. To me, that's very important. But I did get the Ninja 5, which gives me waveforms, vector scopes, and all that stuff. So the R5C doesn't give me anything more than I have in that regard. But I know what you're thinking. Well, what about overheats? Well, where I shoot in the studio, again, the R5 allows me to shoot without any overheating. So that isn't an additional capability. What about 1080p, the oversample? Yes, but I don't shoot in 1080p. So I'm seeing very few capabilities. And when I go do run and gun, I don't have those capabilities. And it would be nice, but is it worth the extra $1,000 to me to be able to have those capabilities when I'm doing run and gun? And I don't really know. I have to think about it a little bit more. And I recommend you think as well, if you're considering it, look at this from an objective point of view and take the weeks or months, whatever time you need to watch people as they come out reviews with reviews, trustworthy people like Gordon Lang, like DP Review, Fro knows, and listen to what they have to say from their experience and then determine for you, is this camera right for you? Now, one thing I am going to sort of finalize on is the micro HDMI. Um, this to me was an error in judgment. We can see from the side of the EOS R5C that it's got plenty of room, at least on the outside, to fit this in. And I'm sure they could have made it work when companies like Sony with the A7S III somehow find a way for a full-size HDMI port. This to me is frustrating, but it is by no means a showstopper. A camera cage, much like this one here, this is designed for the R5. And really, if you have something like this on your camera, forget the cable adapter or manager that Canon provides, which is plastic and a little flimsy. It works for my channel, but something like this is a whole lot more durable. It's made of metal. This is not the small rig. This is the foul cam. I think it's the F22. It's kind of hard to see from here because I don't have my glasses. Oh, they're right here. Let me just take a look. And of course, there's small rig as well. The difference between small rig and this one here, it doesn't say, is that you have the ability with the foul cam is to snap things on and off. There's a little button here. I mean, how quick is that? So it has that advantage. So you can go with something like this and it will give you the protection to protect your camera against accidental damage. So there is a, there is a cost to this. Yes, I know. And that might push some of you into something like a C70, but keep in mind, each of these cameras has different capabilities. If you're the type of person that wants 8K to have a large, high detailed master file, the Canon R5C is a very, very powerful camera. And I'm not trying to sell you on it. Maybe it isn't for you. I still look at the R5 and it's a truly powerful camera. It has a professional stills level camera that's able to deliver professional video, but the R5 requires an investment as well as the R5C to get you to where you need to be. There's cards. There's a Ninja 5 for the R5, so you get those waveforms, vectorscopes, and false colors to properly be able to expose. There is no perfect world, and whether you buy a Sony, a Panasonic, an Olympus, OM Digital, Nikon, your purchase doesn't stop with the camera body. 
it's only the beginning of the journey of your roadmap. And what I can encourage you to do as well is when you're looking at these cameras, just don't get excited by what I say or others. Ask yourself, what is your vision? What do you want to be able to produce and how is this camera going to get you there today, tomorrow, the next year and the year after? Because maybe you do want to get a camera cage. Maybe you do want to go into gimbals. And there's certain technologies that I highly recommend you to invest in when you're going to be shooting video. One is certainly a microphone, a good, good quality lens because the difference between a $2,000 lens and a $200 lens is the sharpness from the center to the edges and the absolute lack of chromatic aberration. And of course, once you've got the lens, once you've got the audio, and again, the R5C has the ability to add in a four channel, 24 bit audio, improving your audio significantly. Another advantage of the R5C over the R5. So you've got your audio, you've got your lens, you've got your camera. What next? Well, a tripod. And you probably already have a tripod. I'm talking about a professional level video tripod like the Manfrotto 504X with aluminum tripod. Lighting. Lighting is almost one of those things you should do right away. But again, you need audio. And the list goes on of things that you want to get. And a gimbal. I really do say, you know, unless you're shooting with a Panasonic that has incredible IBIS where you can walk or even run and get usable results, I don't care how good you think the IBIS system is. If you're shooting video with the R5 and you're not using a gimbal and you're moving, you're producing jerky footage. The R5C or the R5 with a gimbal is going to give you that cinematically smooth video. Truly, truly incredible. One other thing, too, I think it's very, very important is please like and subscribe. It really does help this channel grow. But I'll be honest with you, I take it as a virtual, well, pat on the back, and it means an awful lot to me. I know. You kind of have to reach over. And if you're on a TV, it's a pain because you got to pick up the remote, fiddle with it. And by the time you've gotten ready to subscribe, guess what? You're on to your next video. Don't stress yourself out. If you can subscribe, I do appreciate it. But I do thank you for watching this video. I've recorded two videos today. This is the second video. I recorded the OM Digital. It's my lunchtime. I probably won't get a chance to edit these. You might not be seeing these till late in the evening. But I'm glad that I've gotten them recorded now because I was really, I was getting frustrated last night when I was responding to the comments about the R5C because I felt that there's an awful lot of confusion here. And I think that the R5C is getting, well, Canon's getting beaten around for the wrong reasons. And again, I'll fall back to the HDMI. I mean, really, that, that is just silliness. It's a, to me an error in judgment, and I can't defend that in any way whatsoever. But all of the other aspects that we might consider weaknesses, I don't consider them a cripple hammer. By choosing a professional level operating system found in their cinema line and bringing it to the R5 in the R5C, I see that as offering many more opportunities than challenges. And that's what I would say is challenges and not cripple hammer here. The cripple hammer is the HDMI. Other than that, you've got some two really, really good cameras to choose from. And this is almost following the way Panasonic did with the S-Series. We had the S1, which was a really good hybrid camera. We had the S1R, still do, which is photocentric. And then, of course, we have the S1H. And to me, this is Canon looking at the S1H, the Z9, a bunch of other cameras, and really coming up with a solid unit. And I would just like to talk to somebody at Canon to find out who was it who won the argument over that micro HDMI port? That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.